here at Heinz Athletic Center. Thanks for joining us on this Friday night. Our officials tonight, Tommy Morrissey, Mike Palau, and Mike Flurry. Immediately a turnover. Here come the Bronx in maroon. Powell hands it off to the top of the key. It's Demencio Vaughn. Started his career at Ryder. Went over to Ole Miss. Now right back in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, and he starts things off. The graduate student from New York City. There's a three from Clint, Quinn Slazinski. Not close. That's the way Kevin Baggett likes to play, Jake. The Bronx are at their best. And they're attacking, getting the basketball inside, not just off post feeds. This team will drop you off the bounce and try to get it into the teeth of your defense as well. We mentioned Ryder playing in their MAC opener. Three and six overall. They're still looking for that first true road win. They're 0 and 5 in true road games. They're coming off a pair of SEC games. An SEC road trip at Ole Miss in South Carolina. Inside it's James, but Nelly Jr. Joseph swats it away. The reigning MAC player of the week. And just such a defensive force. And that's when the Gales are at their best defensively, when there's pressure out front from the guards funneling into Nelly on the inside. Some pressure on the inbounds, but a wide open. Ajiri Ogimuno Johnson. So the patience pays off there, and it's 4 nothing Ryder. Well, action from the shooters to the corners, and then the slip man, screener wound up making him pay. Walter Clayton Jr. has space, takes advantage. And a splash, Iona on the board. Okay, he has looked better and better and has gotten a lot more trust from Rick Pitino as November turned into December out of the rotation. A fantastic ESPN Events Invitational as that three is good from Demencio Vaughn. Going back to Walter Clayton Jr., that three-game road trip down at Disney, 15 points, 13 points, 13 points. We talked to assistant coach... Casey Stanley yesterday, he says they don't beat Alabama and pull off that historical upset if it wasn't for him. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And, Jake, remember this. This is a true freshman, something we don't see a lot in college basketball these days, getting this many minutes thoroughly. Absolutely. Quickly in transition. That's a mid-range J. Too strong for Ryder. And here comes Iona. Ricky, or er, Beric John Luis drives to the rack. John Luis with the play of Orlando with that huge block in the final seconds to secure that Alabama in top 10 win, but he can do other things as well and fill up that stat sheet. Part of last year's Mac All-Tourney team, a step back, long two from Vaughn, a long rebound into the hands of Clayton. Iona a chance to take their first lead tonight. And it looks like we have a clock malfunction. The shot clock did not begin. So two and a half minutes into this game, Ryder came out of the gates hot. You kind of expected that because, again, they haven't beat this team since 2018. So you got to change something up. And they came out fast, and it worked. Well, and they haven't been in the state of New Jersey long. So they're getting used to having to play on the road. And, listen, they've had some they, – they are battle-tested when you look at their schedule from November. But – I don't think anyone wants to start Mac playoff with the team coming off a top 10 win and, and making history within the league. And the conference commissioner, Rich Enzer, in the house tonight. Commissioner of the Mac, longtime commish. Yes, Iona, the unanimous pick in the preseason to win this conference. Ryder picks fifth to win it all. But as you mentioned, this is the last of seven straight road games for Ryder. They're happy to get back to... New Jersey in a little bit. They'll have Marist on Sunday. Yeah, no, listen, that, and that is a Marist team, as we know, Jake, who Rick Pitino said we were very lucky to get past. They outplayed us Wednesday night, and the Gales with a little late comeback to get that one on the road in Poughkeepsie. Inside, a foul as the layup attempt from Colton Cashaw can't go, but he'll head to the line for a pair. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, it's a high pick and roll with the big fella Nelly. And sometimes negating the pick and roll is just as good as using it, meaning the defender's trying to cheat the screen. You wound up going the other direction and getting in to the interior. Cash awesome. Friendly home bounces. That was actually his first free throw attempt of the season. In fact, all five points, now we should say six, have came 48 hours ago in that come from behind win at Maris. How about that? Those boinks are something else. 
Interested to see. Oh, Gale's an early pressure. Interested to see, Jake, if Ryder comes out with a lot of zone. That was unexpected for Maris to zone nails for 40 minutes the other day. They were expecting a lot more man and Ryder will switch it up. Iona with its, with its first lead tonight inside with 10 seconds to shoot. It's James on the block. And once again, the presence from Nelly Jr. Joseph. Playing aggressive without fouling early. Reverse layup good from Dylan Von Eyck, the captain on this team. And right now, it's Iona on the 6-0 run in the last minute. And even if it's not all out trapping, Rick Pitino just wants them to feel it defensively. Pick up 94 feet and at least have your presence be felt. Murray trying to slither inside, not on the same page as Mervyn James. That's a turnover for Ryder. So off that first minute, Ryder had a little momentum. What has Iona done differently to get the momentum back on their side? I think their ball pressure and their off-the-ball defense has been terrific here early. Remember, other than that shot, then Demencio Vaughn and Murray with that touch right there really kept the basketball out of their top two options here, out of their hands early. Iona scored six straight. Offensive board from Junior Joseph. He'll get a chance for a pair right now. It seems like there's more urgency crashing the boards as well. Uh, there is for sure, and, and that's the deal. When you talk to other coaching staffs within this league, and you're going up against Nelly Junior Joseph. We know that he put the stamp on this league as a freshman early, and now stronger as a sophomore. And that body at six foot nine, two forty is huge, especially when he's able to operate down low, back, pick up an early foul or two. So Rick Pitino likes to say it's a whole nother dimension to the rest of their first half. It's a wide open three, top of the key. Nothing but Stanley yesterday. He really praised the basketball IQ for Dylan Von Eich and has the green lights to take those types of shots. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Graduate student, has those games, has those minutes under his belt. And Rick Pitino really relies on his veteran leadership. It's a 10-0 run right now for Iona. Inside, Vaughn can't get the baseline J to go, but he's fouled by the aforementioned Vaughn Ike. So, Ryder, a couple of chances to extinguish being on the wrong side of this run with this foul here. What would you see? Well, Vincio Vaughn, is, there's a reason why he is first team, uh, preseason second team all league. He is a load to handle when he's in a face-up situation or back to the basket. And you see he has touch and he can beat you and fill that stat sheet in multiple ways. They call him a little bit of a walling up bump that time. I thought they could have let that one go. That's a tough one on Von Eich. Demencio Vaughn can't undersell how important he is not only to this team, but to this program. He's one of 10 Bronx all time to rank top 25 in both points and rebounds. I own about five, almost five minutes in. It's Cashaw. Nearly deflected, ball on the ground. And it's Ryder basketball. Some more energy off of that timeout by Kevin Baggett. Uh, Rick Pitino going to the bench yet again. And you see the depth that he has from a perimeter standpoint. Because he now Cashaw is out. He could still go jolly. And obviously the freshman Clayton up front for ball pressure. Starting to see some of this pressure even more now on these inbounds plays. Ryder has not made a basket in more than three minutes. It's Vaughn. Back up top, Ogimuno Johnson with Murray. Ten seconds to shoot for the Bronx. Superb defense by Jolly. It's a fast break for the Gales. John Luis. Nice. The hero step. Got it to go. Took the words right out of my mouth. What a smooth Euro step to elude the defender. Jake, I am shocked at how little the basketball has been in Murray's hands here this first five or six minutes of the half. Nice Nice pass. feed, gets two defenders, and that's a superb play by Ogi Muno Johnson. So the Iona lead currently at five. They made four of their last five buckets. Now at the baseline, nice feed. Von Eich gets the end one to go. 
Beautiful pass by Barrick John Luis. Drew the secondary defender. First it was the blow by. Didn't use the middle pick and roll and then the dump off to Dylan. Nice soft touch at the end. Dylan Von Eich already with seven points tonight. He had six in 29 minutes at Maris. Didn't take long to break that here tonight in the Mac home opener. Different type of tempo, different speed of a game. John Dunn, Wednesday night in Poughkeepsie. Jake tried to grind it out, keep it low scoring. A lot of half court basketball and zone. And Ryder likes to play more of this Iona style. It's gonna be interesting. Some more substitutions and Iona sticking with this press early on and it works out here. Jean-Louis, the layup. And Rick Pitino's making the Bronx maybe play a speed faster than they'd want to. Right now, Ryder has to have some poise. You're down 10 early on the road here to the Gales. That's not ideal if you're Kevin Baggett's squad. Kevin Baggett, when we talked to him this morning, seven straight road games as Murray's three is too strong. He said they flat out haven't been able to have a full practice in a couple of weeks because of all the travel. That's <laughs> how you can see it. They've been logging that mileage. Nelly Jr. Joseph. There were two or three Bronx in there. It does not matter for the sophomore from Nigeria. Well, when the big fella is able to get real estate that deep with the defender on his backside and able to turn over that left shoulder, it's going to be bad news for the defense. And off the ball foul here. It's going to be on Walter Clayton Jr. We're seeing the depth of Iona come even deeper right now. The junior from Naples, Florida, Parker Weiss, the walk-on in the game early on. Well, that's, seems like yesterday when they played Alabama and Nate Oates in that March NCAA tournament game, how many minutes Parker Weiss got for Rick Pitino in that one? Ten minutes in that one, of course. Rick Pitino and Nate Oates in Alabama faced off in the NCAA tournament. Alabama won that one, but, of but he, course, revenge last week yeah, in Disney. Yeah, but you know what? He, he will use him. In different spurts, consistently at times. And there it is. Oh, Woo. a call there. The fans don't like it. Nearly another turnover with that pressure. Neither does Rick Pitino. But you see what Weiss brings to the table, that grittiness, that ball pressure, not to get up and be pesky there defensively. Well, that's a tough one. He certainly can't believe it. So can many of the fans in this building. It is a whiteout, by the way. T-shirts on every seat. I didn't see shirts for us. Yeah, somewhere. I mean, we got to <laughs> – they got them folded up tight underneath. Powell's jumper from the elbow has too much on it. And here come the Gales. Deflection. Not only are they forcing the pressure on the defensive end, Vin, they've made five straight shots. Well, and you know what? When you're in an offensive rhythm and you're getting rewarded for hard work at the defensive end, that's when you start seeing guys play with a higher level of confidence. And short spurt for Rice, but able to hold down the fort now with Jolly and Quinn Slazinski back in. And Ryan Myers, somebody that could get hot and cooking in a good way. Coach Stanley says we want him to find that shot this year. He can be aggressive. Nice pass. Nelly Jr. Joseph, how about a number and one? The pick is his home tonight, and nobody else is allowed right now. There's no doubt about it. What a pass to the inside hand away from Spike Jolly. Look at this. Clinic on feet in the post, but it's because the big fella nearly sealing to the inside. The Bronx have no answer for him on the interior so far. have... Six foot two, Corey McKeithen on him. Nelly Jr. Joseph at six nine. You want uh, that mismatch every time for no, Iona. This is a load. This is a load for them. You see the fourteen to six early advantage points in the paint favoring the Gales. Twenty five ten in favor of the team expected to win it all in the MAC this year. This is their first home game in the conference. Riders' first overall game in the MAAC. A 12-2 run over the last two minutes. A long two from James is in and out. What do you make of that shot selection, Vin? I think it just shows you how Iona's cutting off angles, and I'm sure Kevin Baggett wants higher percentage looks than 
fadeaway jumpers contested. Here's Nelly Jr. Joseph going to work once again. This is simply Ooh. too easy right now. No, he's put, you know, he's he's operating over both shoulders and just putting on a footwork clinic right now. Nelly Jr. Joseph has eight. McKeithen loses it going up for it. He may have heard the footsteps because Nelly Jr. Joseph did not get a hand on that, but his presence was enough to cause the turnover. Well, and you mentioned footwork. What a terrific job of showing his presence defensively without fouling there. That is easier said than done when you're that size trying to help off dribble penetration. And it's interesting because Nelly Jr. Joseph, when opposing teams are scouting this Gales team, he's the first name that pops up on the scouting report, right? Last year it was Isaiah Ross. He's yep. not here anymore. Now Nelly Jr. Joseph is getting a lot more attention. Slazinski slings it to the top of the key. Back to the corner, Clayton Jr. for three. Too strong, long rebound, ball on the ground. Junior Joseph, the second effort. But to your point, Jake, it also depicts the depth that the Gales have. Because look at the way that uh, Elijah Joyner has played this year. Look at Quinn Slazinski at Maris having a career day. So you want to shut down one or two guys, and then Rick Pitino has had several games this year where three, four, and five have gotten you. That depth helped pull off that upset over Alabama last week. So you want to call ball, didn't get it. Here comes Rock in transition. McKeithen lobs one up. Short bounce into the hands of Tyson Jolly. There's a three. Woo, way too strong by Ryan Myers. But Slazinski once again can't get it to go. Even though it doesn't fall, you get the second chance opportunity. Now Myers had a little... Pep in his step. He zone offensively. You've seen some very uncomfortable shot attempts forced by the Gales defense early here for the Bronx. Riders missed their last four shots, made just one of eight. And of course, might have to change a little bit for them to get back in this game. As Cedric Altman comes in for Ryder. He's a big piece who they've missed on that SEC road trip. Ole Miss, South Carolina, missed both games with a concussion, but Coach Baggett, he says we need his experience to win these games. Absolutely. Listen, we talked about it earlier with Dylan Von Eyck for the Gales, and that rings true with so many teams in this league. You cannot duplicate experience in minutes. A long two from Powell. Can't find Nylon, and here come the Gales searching for more. They're on a 14-2 run. Nine minutes in, it's Jolly. A nice move behind the back. The hook shot short, offensive boards Slazginski, but stolen away by Corey McKeithen. Driving on the left side. A step, fans on to travel. They don't get it, but the second effort pays off. It's Dwight Murray Jr. Yeah, it didn't look conventional, but that's a good old fashioned jump stop there. And that was probably Ryder's best sequence of the half. Pesky defensively, and then getting out on the break for the easy one. White Murray Jr., by the way, needed just three points entering tonight to get 1,000 in his career. So he's at 999 and counting. James with the offensive rebound, and he picks up the trash, the freshman from Kentucky. The points in the paint advantage to the Gales continue, and that time it started with Myers' penetration. Midway through this first half, all Iona. A little bit of a trip there by Walter Clayton Jr., so for Ryder, clearly the interior game isn't working out. Would you like them to shoot more threes maybe? Yeah, I think you got to let it come to you. You don't want to force the issue, but maybe get your defense. Maybe manufacture buckets other ways. Maybe it's force a turnover, score on the break, offensive rebound, get to the charity stripe. If you're walking up against a set defense, Jake, against the Gales, it's going to be a long night. you got to find alternative ways to score sometimes. Reverse layup. A failure for Murray, and it's John Luis. Flips it out, straight away three, kaboom! Walter Clayton Jr. makes the lead 20. Okay, this freshman plays with more and more confidence, it seems, every time you see him. 17-2 run now. Ryder looking for any sort of answer on the offensive end. Yeah, it's getting away early. James off to Altman, trying to drive. Junior Joseph says, you are not coming in this lane. Five seconds to shoot now, it's Murray. 
needs to put something up. And he was not aware of that. It's a turnover, the shot clock violation. Uh, Rick Pitino's applauding on the sidelines, as he should be. Late in the shot clock, lead scorer, basketball in his hands in three separate white jerseys help defend Murray on that possession. That is defensive communication at its best. There is the Hall of Famer in his second year with the Gales. Of course, took them to the NCAA tournament, winning four games in five days in the MAC tournament. And of course, that is the ultimate goal this year. Once again, it's Cashaw. Flips inside. Junior Joseph and Von Eyck not on the same page. The third turnover tonight for the Gales. Good idea. Those are mistakes you could deal with sometimes. The floor was spaced. The ball was about to get reversed. Being unselfish, a little high-low action that they've had success with. Certainly when you're up 20, it won't sting as much. Right. That too. <laughs> Foul inside, oh, nice. off to James, Woo. and it's a walk. Von Eich shaking his head. The paint opportunity is once again unsuccessful for Ryder. Well, Von Eich, credit Von Eich with walling up and holding his ground and not reaching in and moving the feet there to cause the travel. There's the steal. The press works out for Ryder as Murray can't get it to go. Offensive rebound, though. It's Powell, pump fake, open three. He got it. Well, they needed that in a big time way to stop the bleeding. Yeah, that was the end of a 17-2 run. That's the deficit right now for Ryder. We still got about 28 minutes and change to go in this one. A lot of basketball left to be played. This is a little bit, bit of a change of a pace for Iona in terms of position to be in. Yes, they're 7-2. However, in four of their seven wins, they've trailed at the half. That's right. That's right. And, and listen, and Rick, we talked about what Rick Pitino said the other night against Maris. They're outplayed in that game. And he, there's nothing that the film room can't solve sometimes. And they've been learning from their mistakes, and he still feels that this team could play a lot more complete of a 40-minute game. And that's the beauty of November and December. Getting yourself geared up for the new year. Here's a fast break. Myers can't finish the. Too easy, the slam for Nelly Jr. Joseph. That breaks a drought of six minutes with no field goals for Iona, yet the lead is still 20. I think that you can't get it all back at once if you're the Bronx. Got to settle in, play hard defensively, try to rebound with this bigger club at multiple positions, and try to get high percentage looks. Cashaw had some space, decided not to put it up. Now he drives, ball loose. Back to Slazinski. He's open. He'll take it. Too wow. strong. Looked in rhythm with his feet, comfortable too. Intercepted. Look out. John Luis. How about the athlete he is? Once again, a double up on the scoreboard. 40 to 20. Three minutes left in the first half. Here from New Rochelle. Murray getting bombarded by a handful of Gales. Ten to shoot now. It's Jeremiah Pope. Too much. John Luis with the big man board. He will not be afraid to get in there and rebound with the bigs and can do this and handle and operate and initiate offense as well. Slazinski and Junior Joseph not on the same page. So let's see what we got here. Jean-Louis Daylight on the other end of the floor. Shot 
the gap in that passing lane, read it right from the start, and then the conversion to the quick bucket in a matter of seconds. So it's Iona 40, Ryder 20, two and a half remaining in this first half. We appreciate you folks sticking with us through these technical difficulties. We'll keep you posted on the time and score. And we got our graphics back. So thanks to our great team led by Garrett in the production truck. McKeithen had some space. Junior Joseph on the defensive end. He'll be called for the foul. That'll be Nelly Junior Joseph's first foul. And back to the free throw line for a pair goes Ryder. Oh, they got the basketball into the post. Little kick out, little reversal. Take advantage of the driving lane, and all of a sudden you got two from the charity stripe. Yeah, Corey McKeithen so far scoreless in nine minutes. So the first one goes. Didn't get any playing time last year. Had a season-ending injury prior to his freshman year. But Coach Baggett says there's nothing like learning on the fly. I know it might be some tough learning lessons. You, of course, an assistant coach, know more than anybody. Yeah, sometimes it's just best to get thrown right, right into the fire. Like Jake Marsh and Vin Parisi working together. That's <laughs> yes. how magic's made. You <laughs> just got to do it sometime. No dress rehearsals. Nothing wrong with that. Having a blast with you. Nice footwork. Slazinski a little short. Plenty of Bronx on the glass. They're down by 18. Looking for some sort of answer before the halftime break. Nelly, oh. Junior, Joseph, look out. Here comes Cashaw, the twist, the layup, good. The night, he had five entering the entire season before this basketball game. So it's Iona 43, Ryder 22 with a minute 30 remaining here in the first half. Murray averaging 15 points per game. Ryder's best score entering the day. He gets that one to go. And if the Bronx are going to make some sort of comeback, he has to be the focal point, right, Vin? Yeah, and by the way, that's the most aggressive I feel like he's been with. Entering this evening, averaging six and a half blocks per game, that was 14th in the entire country. I think Nelly has all three blocks. Junior Joseph, and they have been timed perfectly all away from the ball. Help side defense tonight. Lazinski with a minute to go, weaves through the defense, can't get the layup to fall. And under a minute to go, it's 43-24 Iona. Murray, Altman, quick feed to the top of the key to McGlone. 25-second differential shot and game clock. Ogimuno Johnson, the right-hand hook, can't fall, but he is fouled going up for it by Robert Brown, the senior. Well, the shooting woes for the Bronx continue. They entered this one at 27% from downtown and just one for five thus far in this one. And that is the great equalizer, the three-point shot, Jake. And, you know, we have a coach in the building tonight that really changed uh, the way the game was played by a lot of teams when he implemented this with the full-court pressure and Billy Donovan and that historic Providence season and 87 and – just see how far it takes so many teams that are guard-oriented in this game these days. Ajiri Ogimuno Johnson, just a 55% free throw shooter for Ryder. You wouldn't know by that trip. Two for two. We have a 12-second differential shot and game clock here, so Iona most likely getting one more look on the offensive end before the break, up by 17. Jean-Louis, back to Slazinski. And now it's Cashaw draining down some clock. Ten to shoot. Inside. The kick. Slazinski for three. Rims in and out. Shot clock off. A 17-point deficit. It's McLone. Wave it off. Going the other way. And you mentioned the scoreboard before. It don't matter if they're up one or up 17, Jake. That is going to be a staple of Rick Pitino's defense. Sprint back. More importantly, get outside that arc and sacrifice the body and get in the proper defensive position. And credit Cashaw for that one. So we've got 13.1 left. Iona by 17. Looking to beat the buzzer here. Now it's five. Brown. A pump fake, the drive, the rainbow, no, but Slazinski, the lucky touch, and a fitting Made the Bronx look very uncomfortable at times. All right, so put 20 minutes on the clock, and we are underway.
for this final 20. Mac game number two for Iona. They had a dramatic come from behind win at Marist 48 hours ago to win by seven. They went on a 14 nothing run in the final two and a half minutes. Looking to move to two and oh, up by 19 midway through. That's a deep three. It's short from Dwight Murray Jr. And here come the Gales on the offensive end. Yeah, I don't know if you want to get it back like that. Just launching immediately, get some inside outside, maybe dribble penetration cooking. Slazinski has trouble with it. On the other end, it's Demencio Vaughn, coast to coast. No, but a foul going up. That's the right mindset to have if you're Demencio Vaughn, preseason second team all Mac candidate. Get out, run, and try to get an easy one. He's going to get a couple from the charity stripe. Demencio Vaughn, his experience. He's the graduate student, started his career at Ryder, went down to Ole Miss, now back here with Coach Baggett and the Bronx. A 73% free throw shooter. Too strong there. So this Ryder team coming off an SEC road trip, lost both games at South Carolina and Ole Miss. When Coach Baggett scheduled those games during the offseason as Vaughn's second free throw falls down, it's to help prepare you. Because, of course, the SEC, you have a plenty of NCAA uh, tournament caliber teams there so that when you play against Iona, who is also an NCAA tournament team, it helps you prepare for the type of talent you're going to see in conference play. Oh, there's no doubt about it. But they, had a, they have had a grind in terms of not just the opponents, but in terms of the travel. And, they, you know, you want to be battle tested, but you also want to give yourself a chance sometimes and make sure you're coming at it with fresh legs. And the Bronx have had... Some long stretches outside of the Garden State. Of course, residing in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. They've been to South Carolina, Ole Miss, a couple games in Mexico, Pennsylvania, Buffalo. They're racking up the sky miles, I'll tell you that. Oh, that's a little frequent fly mileage. Yes. Good hustle. Ogie Muno Johnson, kick out, nice feed, baseline jumper. Not today, says Beric John Luis. Here's Slazinski. Rainbows one up. Nelly Jr. Joseph had a heck of a first half. Can now five of six at the charity stripe in this contest. It's a 21-point edge for Rick Pitino's Iona Gales. Ryder entered tonight. 0-5 in true road games. Unless we see some sort of historical comeback. It'll most likely remain winless in that category. That three's too strong. Nice offensive board, though, by Vaughn. An athletic shot there. Hustle on the offensive glass. Demencio Vaughn trying to get some hustle points and get his team back cooking. And the shot clock malfunctions once again, unfortunately. So we will re-inbound the basketball. It stayed frozen at 30. Two minutes into the second half. Full press trying to trap the Gales. You got two guys right here. It seems to be working. And he travels. Works out for Coach Baggett's squad. Rick Pitino not happy. Let's take a timeout here. The Hall of Famer does not care about the scoreboard, Jake. Basketball. These two teams historically over the last 15 years are the most successful. You look at the last 15 years, Ryder 258 wins, second in the MAC. Iona 270, most in the MAC. They've had tons of success. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And this, when you talk men's basketball history in this league, so much of it is Iona. The run that Tim Kloos went on before Rick Pitino started his reign here, Kevin Willard, Jeff Rulin. Tim Welsh, Pat Kennedy. Now I'm going way back. Talk Jim Valvano <laughs> and well, speaking the legendary of days. Coach Valvano, it's a perfect segue. Currently on Rick Pitino's staff, Tom Abadamarco. There he is, right next to Casey Stanley. Yes, so he was an assistant at NC State. 1982 to 1986 for Jim Valvano. National won, championship. They won Rick. the national championship. And, of course, 
Upcoming, it is Jimmy V Week. We have the Jimmy V Classic in Madison Square Garden. Just an amazing cause, especially it's been highlighted with what Dick Vitale has gone through yeah, over the offseason. Absolutely, right now. no doubt about it. And remember this what got Jim Valvano to NC State was the success that he had here at Iona in the late 70s, obviously, then turning into the successful 80s for this program. But it started with Tom, Tommy Benamarco recruiting Jeff Rulin, an All American, to come here and turn down Kentucky and the big boys. And we're back underway. Seven Final Fours. Just think about that one alone. Must be nice. There's a three from the right wing. It's short Woo! from Vaughn. Did he get up? As Tyson Jolly helps up from his teammates. Look at Jolly Sky off the defensive boards. Demencio Vaughn with the three. So we're continuing to see this press from Ryder right now. You Down gotta, by 19. Yeah, you got to try to manufacture defense in the offense and get easy ones if you're Kevin Baggett's squad right there. That was a good trap area, sideline just past midcourt. Cashaw gets the screen from Von Eich. Ten seconds to shoot for the Gales. It's John Luis open for three. You bet. Yeah, he is so versatile and can fill up so many different lines of the box score on both ends. Iona's fourth made three of the night. Ryder struggling, meanwhile, one of nine, and the shot clock remains frozen at 30 once again. It's got to be the fifth or sixth shot clock issue as well. It's been an evening of some technical difficulties. Yes, we appreciate everybody bearing with us throughout this evening. I'll tell you what, if you want to spin zone it in a positive manner, it gives you more reps for sideline out of bounds plays. <laughs> got to stay positive. You always look at the bright side. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, that is phenomenal work. So a foul on the inbounds. As Iona leads by 22. Currently their largest lead of the night as Slazinski comes in for Von Eich. It's Powell on the corner. Back to Demencio Vaughn. Quick feed Altman. Open three. And the deep range woes continue for the Bronx. They are now one of 10 from downtown. Shot clock frozen once again with 15.57. I love the concept. I think it's long sleeve tees and, and hooded sweatshirts coming with it as well. Might have to put it on sale somewhere. Whatever works motivation wise, but I love the rising above the negativity. I'll tell you what, it worked two days ago. He had his career high, 20 points in the win at Maris. That's four points tonight so far. As a foul going up for it, Nelly Jr. Joseph will head back to the charity strike. Well, they made it a point to front the post and try to take away the high-low that time from the top of the key on and in. And you can just see, trying to make an emphasis to take, the, take him away. Oh, nice heads-up play. That foul, by the way, was on the ground, so my apologies. But regardless, Iona picks up two points, and the lead's now 24. A push from behind on Colton Cashaw. Rick Pitino continues to question why his players made that. Is that what separates a Hall of Fame coach from anybody else? Well, listen, he, he just he demands perfection and is going to coach that, that way. Ryder being outscored by five in the second half has made just one three in this game. A nice fake by Murray gets the end one to go. Some uh, bright spots there for the Bronx. Yeah, it's good aggressive basketball. That's three for ten from the field with Dwight Murray. 0 for four from downtown. They have made him earn every single point that he has come across this evening. 
when you're averaging 15 points per game entering this bout with the Gales. That layup gave him six. It stays that way after the missed free throw. For Ryder, we can call it out as we see it. He needs more production for them to win this game. No doubt about it. Too much contact there by Demencio Vaughn. His team foul number five for Ryder. I'll tell you what, the fouls are picking up in the second half. Only five minutes in. Four apiece. Junior Joseph, nice feed, but a block from behind. Iona wanted a goal 10. But a heads up play for him. The big guy is the roller to make the unselfish pass. That three unsuccessful from Allen Powell. And here's John Luis. Lobs one up, facing the immediate double team. It's Junior Joseph, and Ryder is there for the answer. That's what you got to do. You got to be scrappy. It helps side defense from behind. Defend them as a group. Nelly Junior Joseph with 15 points, eight rebounds so far, and this reverse layup is good. That's Ajiri Ogimuno Johnson with some success against the reigning MAC Player of the Week. Beautiful move. Best post play out of the Bronx this evening. Points in the paint continues to be all Gales. It's 30 to 18. Junior Giono, you talk about the unselfishness. Already with 11 team assists so far. They're averaging 14 a game, and there's 14 minutes left in this one. So looking to get above that number before this team hits the showers. Ryder down by 20. McKeithen behind the back dribble. Off to Powell, open three. It's short. Good box. Von Eyck with the physicality down low. When we talked to Coach Stanley, he mentioned that Ryder's a very physical team. So for Iona, you want to match that. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Second effort there. It's Myers off Von Eyck with the pump fake. Second chance opportunity. John Luis. Foul on the ground. And when you talk about that physicality, at the top of the scouting report today, one of the main themes that Rick Pitino and his staff talked about was how good of an offensive rebounding team Ryder is, and they have held them today to six offensive rebounds only. Doing a good job in the hustle department. So this possession extends for the Gales off the inbound Von Eyck. Bounce feed Tyson Jolly gets it to go. He's got four. Nice flash to the sweet spot. Guards are able to operate out of the paint. Tyson Jolly known for doing those little things. Of course, scoring one of them, but it's the things you won't necessarily see in the stat sheet that makes him grow. Out of bounds as Vaughn goes up for the jumper. Stripped by Von Eyck. Down the shot clock, Powell drives inside the spin, the mid-range J. Not enough on it. Von Eyck with a board. White jerseys everywhere on the defensive backboards. Myers can't get control. it to go, but an offensive foul. Yep. Good call. Too much arm extension? Oh, outside the arc and just a little bit out of control. Going a little bit too fast down the freeway, Jake Marsh. What's it like to be on that end of a charge? <laughs> you see the bruises in the morning or what? Well, maybe on the back side. Iona up 22. Still showing that defensive pressure. Yeah. They like the token pressure. It may not necessarily result in two guys trapping on the basketball, but just trying to speed up the tempo, maybe force some uncharacteristic turnovers and once like that. again, the pressure gets to Whoa. Ryder. Nearly a backcourt violation. James tiptoed that, that midcourt line just enough. Yeah, that's not where you want to give it to the big guy. John Luis, no look feed, wide open. Von IQ bet. He holds the follow through. It's Iona by 25. 
unselfish basketball and wide open high percentage looks for the Gales right now. A blocking foul here, Von five right now. Von Eich has made two of those five team threes. And once again, it's a turnover for the Bronx. That's number 13 in the game. Jolly over to Myers. A little bit of sloppy action right now, but here's Altman with the fast break. Can't finish the layup, and it has been that type of night for the Bronx. No doubt about it. Foul on the offensive rebound. But when these finger rolls aren't dropping, just the epitome of how things have gone for Kevin Baggett's squad yeah, this evening. Yeah, now it is. It's, it's, it's been a frustrating night. So McGlown got themselves down early. Gets the first free throw. And it was a significant hole early. And you would think based off of history, Ryder had a very good chance in this game entering it. They're six and three in Mac openers under Kevin Backett. They've won three in a row as well. That streak I want to get too ahead of ourselves, probably coming to an end tonight. Yeah. Credit Gales have played hard defensively and unselfish. And here's what we talked about earlier, Jacob. Rick Pitino getting some guys' minutes across the board. Yeah, that's Joshua Duwatch, the freshman from Australia in the game. And it looks like he might be called for the foul. One's going to be on Trey James. So now you see Coach Patino showing off that depth. We even saw it in the first half with Parker Weiss in the game. Now it seems like the reserve's going to get a lot of action down the stretch here. Yeah. But I will tell you this. It's, it's not going to be packing it in and, and, and not putting those – Top guys back in. You still got 11-14 to go. You'll see Coach Patino still get plenty of more minutes out of his top seven to eight rotation. We've seen 12 Gales get in this basketball game so far. Nelly Jr. Joseph leads the way with 15 points and counting. And for Iona, a team that we discussed earlier, Vin, has had so many games in such a sh short period of time. They'll get a well-deserved break after this one. It'll be nine days off before playing at Barclays Center against Yale next Sunday. Well, and they, think about it. They were down in Florida, the back-to-back -back tournaments, for an easy week and a half, yep. if not longer. So... Travel, staying in hotels, not being in your comfort zone. Flights, it, it, it starts to wear down, wear you down a little bit. And this will be nice. You come back home to the confines of Nourishell, and then you're able to get nine days of resting those legs underneath you, get yourself organized for final exams. As you mentioned, and tip it off at that, of Brooklyn. Right off of the inbound. That's a tag team duo of Duwatch and out of it. Yep. Before hitting the sheets tonight. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, the longest layoff the Gales have is 10 days from Delaware to Siena, December 21st to 31st. When you start getting into 13-day layovers, that, that's tough. Now, now you start craving playing somebody other than yourselves in practice every day. 25-point game right now, approaching the midway point of this second half as Powell, mid, his mid-range J, can't fall. In the rebound by Duch. Pumps the brakes. Slazinski. Now it's Clayton. Jolly the one-handed grab. Turns his back towards the basket. Fade away J. Ryder hasn't made a bucket in four and a half minutes. Let's see if that changes here. 
McGlone is fouled going up for the free throw. I'll tell you what, if we want to give positives to Ryder, you know they're down by 25. They have done a good job creating opportunities at the free throw line and being aggressive. They actually outshot the Gale 17 to 16 at the strike. But you got to take advantage of the charity strike when you get your opportunities here. A lot of their free throws have come because the Gales have done a great job with their perimeter defense, chasing them off the arc and forcing them into dribble penetration scenarios. Now try to finish strong, try to get from three-point plays, and more importantly, take advantage of those free throws. McClone gets one of the two to fall. And a steal here by Powell. Let's see if the Bronx can take advantage. And some enthusiasm by the rider bench. Another steal. Look out. Oh, the block! Oh. Nelly Jr. Joseph! It is his world. We are just living in it, folks. Have a day, number 23. There's not another player in this league that could time blocks. And this one was from behind in transition. We've seen him block off the ball probably in every scenario you can this evening. I thought that was two points for sure. That reminded me of LeBron in game seven of the 2016 <laughs> finals. You think it's an easy layup That's right. and then look out. Here's an open three, Allen Powell. Oh, a couple of Gales not on the same page, but saved by Junior Joseph. One of 13 from three for Ryder. They've gotten a handful of open looks, just can't cash in right now. Weiss, corner three. Short, Junior Joseph though, once again, he's in on it. And just his presence alone, Vin, it's gotta be traumatizing for this rider defense. Well, that was a load for Benson to handle, and he, you cannot just operate on the defensive boards with him in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. You need to gang rebound, meaning you need to get multiple bodies on Nelly from the front, from the back, from the side to get Junior Joseph off that glass. One guy's not going to do it from a box-out scenario. By the way, that rebound gave him another double-double. He's at 16 points, 10 re rebounds. That'll be his fourth double-double of the season. If you need any reasons why, this man is the reigning MAC player of the week, the preseason All-MAC first team. I mean, this game has just been tremendous. Oh, this he shows you why he's had the preseason accolades, and he shows you why he's had the in-season Acknowledgements, a huge reason for this 24 point lead. Clayton gets across midcourt against this feisty rider defense. A, a three, you betcha. That's Tyson Jolly getting in on the action from downtown. We've seen multiple gales tonight benefit from guys making the extra pass and able to set their feet and take advantage of those opportunities. We've said this once, we're saying it again. It's the largest lead of the night for Iona. 27. <laughs> Deflection there defensively. What can you learn in these final eight minutes? The game may be decided, maybe not the margin, but right now, what are you learning as both teams finish this contest? Well, I think if you're a rider, you're learning that interior play is, is on multiple guys. You can't be in these one-on-one -on -one scenarios, whether it's rebounding, defending the post, finishing inside. Junior Joseph has had too many one-on-one -on -one scenarios where he's made it look easy, quite frankly. And then I think if you're the Gales, you know, playing with a lead, playing together with different rotations, there's a reason why Coach Patino's been shuffling things. You know, he's still evaluating. He's still pushing different buttons as the rigors of conference play keep approaching. Under eight to go in this one. We mentioned earlier both teams are on game 10 right now as this three is short. Offensive board though by Weiss. Junior Joseph, the immediate double team. And Pope was the seven, rider 40. Gale well on their way to a 2-0 start. 
in conference play. The unanimous pick to win this conference, and they are showing exactly why that was the case with this performance tonight. Tyson Jolly pump fakes the three, drives inside, layup good. He weaves in and out. Plenty of defenders, but it does not matter, oh, Vin. That was the perfect term you just used, weaved. And the way he's able to avoid any situation of a charge and get that footwork down to avoid a travel, impressive. The lead is 29, and the Gales are hungry for more. Nehemiah Benson drives right side. Offensive foul. Mm. Tough one. I tell you, it tells you a lot about a ball club when you're still stepping in, taking the hit, and taking charges up 29 with seven minutes on the clock. So a lot of our discussion throughout this broadcast, Vin, has been how there's been very little break for these two teams, right? They're both on their 10th game. No other team in the conference has played more than seven entering the evening. Just to put in perspective on maybe how unused to this situation is the turnover for Iona takes place. You look at the calendar, right? It's December 3rd. December 3rd. 2020, Iona had only played one game last year. Yeah, that's right. December 3rd, 2020, Ryder season hadn't begun yet. Yet. How about that? December 5th is when they kicked things off. I mean, that's a great call by you. I mean, talk about a tale of two seasons to where we were. There was a stretch last year, I believe. I'm going off the top of my head, but I believe the Gales played two games in 55 days, or it was some ridiculous you know, scenario to where they had multiple COVID shutdowns and obviously the pandemic not over, but we're at a point to where this could be a, a lot more fruitful of a college basketball season in many ways than obviously the challenges of last season. Yeah, that break you were talking about for Iona. They played on December 23rd against Coppin State and then February 12th against How about Manhattan. That? How about that? That's a layoff. Oh, for January. <laughs> yes. We can say you never lost the game either. <laughs> Here we are with the positivity again. Tyson you, Jolly. I tell you what. I, I mean, I have met optimists in my life, Jake Marsh. But. Woo. Clayton gets the three to fall. The lead is 30. I bet the i are pretty optimistic after this one. Yeah, and you look. Ryan Myers is at the table. I mean, Rick Pitino is going to keep. Working his guys, keep working towards trying to get better each and every possession. For Ryder, they still have another game this weekend. Sunday against Maris, as the jumper is good from Nehemiah Benson. When you were a coach, you get blown out. What exactly? Walk us through the film session the next day. See, there's, it, it depends. So there's times where you get the doors blown off. And the last book that Coach Patino wrote, I, I believe he mentions this, and I believe it's his book in 2013 after they won the national championship. And, and he's a big believer in this, and I, and I agree as well. There's one or two nights a year to where you just get your doors blown off. And, and there's just can't do anything about it. The other team was that good. And... and and then there's other nights where there's major issues, whether it's the effort isn't there. or I, I just think tonight, from Ryder's perspective, Iona was that good tonight in, in so many different areas. There's times where it's better, Jake, to just wipe the slate clean. Uh -huh. Went out looking at the tape. We lost by 30. We lost by 35. We got 36 hours to get ready for this next game. Let's move ahead and look forward. But then there's other times where you really need to address some things before you move forward, and that's that gray area of coaching that's always going to exist that makes it fun. Now, do you see tonight from Ryder's perspective as one of those didn't bring the effort, or you're tipping the cap to Iona I'm more tipping, so? I'm tipping the cap to Iona. I, I mean, I, I just think athletically, their depth, their execution. I didn't see fatigue an issue. At times for Ryder, as much as it was just Iona being on the same page. You hear the crowd chanting, we want Carey. That would be the walk-on number 44, James Carey. We'll see if he gets the nod from Coach Patino down the stretch here. 
Now, I know you know this coaching staff pretty well. What do you think oh, the number and the time early. and score is oh, for bringing way, in the Way too the early. Bench? We're, we're getting to that last media timeout. I mean, <laughs> 449 is a, is a lifetime for coaches, Jake. I'm going to give you. What's your over on it? You, you want the yes. gamble? Minute 38. Minute 38 is when we see James Carey in this ball game. We see Parker Weiss. He's the third-year walk-on. Yep. And some coaches will just wait to the last minute mark, 59 yeah. seconds. And then we might get to it this game, but you get that one opportunity, right? That one last offensive possession where the bench starts going crazy. Yep. You want that shot to fall more than any other the rest of yep. the night. Oh, you're going to hear it. Here's the reason a lot of these students are still here. You hear it. Here he comes. Wow. Did right I? on cue. You are wrong, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is the earliest I've seen Rick Pitino put a walk-on in. 4.38. I was only off by three, three minutes. minutes. <laughs> Here comes number 44. This place is as loud as it's been all night. The 5'10 junior from Pelham, New York, James Carey. And you know what? Good for him. It's a, obviously a 30-point blowout. I think you'll see Kevin Baggett make some moves. He already has as well from his roster perspective with multiple starters on the bench. Do in watch. Fact, in fact, all. Second free throw can't fall. So now the next step of this process, get James Carey the basketball on the offensive end. That's right. Ryder will get a couple of opportunities at the line here. And then the next process after that is let's get a good shot attempt up and see if we yes. can put one down. Because this student section, you can tell, is waiting for it. Benson's first free throw falls down. Gets the other two. All right, so now it's Iona basketball, up by 28, four and change left. And James Carey touched the basketball for a half a second, and you can hear the roars from this crowd. <laughs> Here he is. Everybody on their feet. It's Carey, the step back. Hands it off. Do watch. Ten to shoot. Everyone wants Carey to have the basketball. Five seconds now. Steps back, puts one up. Woo! <laughs> the roof would have came off if that went down. Maybe he'll get another look. That's R.J. Wheezy with the bounce. The six-footer from Allentown, New Jersey. Under four wow. remaining. You called it before, Jake. There is one focus of the Iona offense right now, and it's to get Mr. Carey a bucket. Von Eich feeds Carey. Ooh, little backdoor action. Nearly turns it over. Oh, see, everything involves getting him the basketball. Doesn't work there, but still three and a half left. We'll see if James Carey can get on the board. 76-50, I own over Ryder. Back for the finish of this one on the other end. Don't go anywhere. What you see right now is James Carey on your screen. The walk-on. This place erupted when he came into the game. Now they want to see him score. That's basically the only thing left to decide here in New Rochelle. James Carey for three. Woo. Too strong. Once again, another missed three for Ryder. That was Jordan's balls. One of 15 from downtown for Ryder. Carey's gotten two attempts at the basket so far. Under three to go. He drives. Inside. Brown, the hook shot short. Still being unselfish. Trying to get his teammates involved. Not all about the points. That one falls down for Nehemiah Benson. Right 
Right now, Ryder with a 6 nothing run. But too little too late in this 24-point ball game. Carey drives inside oh. and gets swatted away. Was that a little bit of an, an adrenaline shot? He wants it. He wants it. But look at Coach Patino's calming him down right now. Two minutes to go. Still plenty to be learned for the team. You can see on the body language by Coach Patino. Iona will have a very well-deserved nine days off before next Sunday at Barclays Center against Yale. It's oh. Carey, open for three! <laughs> Felt like the one. That was wide open with time. Maybe another look here. Up by 22. Rick Patino wants his club to move it. Use the shot clock, share the rock. 13 Iona players have played in this game, including the emptying of the bench. Five on the shot clock. Do watch. Fouled. It'll be a pair of shots here. So 104 to go. For Carey specifically, the looks couldn't have been better. Now it's just about connecting, right? There were two from the corner that looked like there were there were two forces. But they were two from the corner where his feet were set. I believe there was one last year to where it went down. Listen, we we'll tell you something about coaching staffs. This only takes place 29. So it's only game night about 30 nights a year, Jake. Yep. You want to have problems like this this night to where you're up 30 trying to get everyone minutes. Joshua do watch the slam sesh with the one hand. 80 points for the Gales. Wheezy. Short Von Eich the board. Nine second differential. One more shot here or? No, they're going to pull it out. Everybody continues with the carry chant. One last chance for the walk on to score. Loose ball, but a turnover, and that'll most likely do it for the opportunity. Shot clock is off. It's Wheezy for three. And that One of 18. Should do it. Impressive performance by these Gales tonight. From wire to wire, the Iona Gales were picked to win this league, and now you know why. 80 to 50.